A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Pega in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Pega and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue official sent word to them. My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. They, then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I'll sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall, he, shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I'll sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, Jesus Christ shall reign. Alleluia, 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 Jesus Christ shall reign. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. The Prince of Peace is the Prince of Peace, a mighty God. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, our reign. Alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory be to thee, Lord. 
When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you, I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever receives the one who sent, the one I sent receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear friends, this morning, Mother Church wants to remind us of a virtue that is increasingly disappearing in our society, and that is a virtue of humility. It is not uncommon to turn on the radio or to turn on your television or any gadget for that matter and to hear younger ones speaking and attacking the older ones with no sense, no sense of respect, no sense of decorum, no sense of fear or reverence for that matter. It is worrying, especially these days when you turn on the radio, Someone goes to buy some little airtime of, say, two Ghana CDs and calls into a radio program and insults the president as though they were colleagues, insults any minister or any state official, for that matter, as though they were colleagues. And this can be only explained because the society generally doesn't regard the spirit of humility anymore. With a little education and a little social status, we tend to think we know it all, and for that matter, we don't regard any other person. But my dear friends, this morning, the Lord Jesus wants to remind us in the gospel reading that humility is very, very important in the life of a Christian. And what is humility? Humility. It is simply giving dignity to other persons without losing your own dignity. Giving value, respect to other people without losing your own value or respect. So in our gospel reading, we are given the encounter or the scenario of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. But this is God stooping low, not just to serve human beings, but stooped so low to wash the feet of mere creatures. So St. Paul captures this beautifully in his letter to the Philippians, Philippians 2, 6 to 11, he says, though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality with God. A thing he could have laid hold to, but he humbled himself, taking the form of a servant and emptying himself to dying on the cross. My dear friends, sometimes our desire to 
emphasize our status, to emphasize who we are is out of insecurity. Because we do not really appreciate what we are made of or who we are, and so we, we want to explain to the society who we are. But I don't think that is the case. If we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus never had to explain himself to the disciples, to the apostles, or to any other person he encountered with the words that I am God. By his actions, they came to see what he was made of. So though he would wash their feet, if we continue with this story, we, are to, we will remember that when Jesus got to Peter, Peter said, no, you cannot wash my feet. You, the Lord, cannot wash my feet. My dear friends, this morning, the Lord wants to invite us to reflect on how we relate with one another. There is a saying that any king who needs to tell his followers that he is a king is in fact no king. If you have to remind your followers that you are a king, then you are actually no king. Let us relate with one another, respecting each other, giving value to each other, honoring ourselves, serving one another in the spirit of humility, and the message will be clear what we are made of. So in the first reading, Paul and Barnabas find themselves in Gentile territories. And today, Paul takes his time to give them a brief history of the life of Israel. But the whole idea Paul was putting across was to remind the Gentiles that through the man Jesus Christ, God has raised them from nothingness to become something by giving them a dignity that is above what they used to be. So he traces their history from Egypt down to Jesus Christ and says, by the death of the man Jesus, their sins have been washed away. In other words, they have become a different creation. That is who you and I have become. God has added value to us. Let us respect one another. Let us be humble and treat one another with value. May the grace of God enable us to do this. Amen. Shall we rise and pray? Let us pray that the church might always be faithful to her mission of proclaiming the good news of Jesus and the need for repentance in his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who raised up David as a holy and just king, may raise up in our own day leaders and people of influence and power who do what is just and right in his sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may follow the master's example as he washes the disciples' feet by our humble service of one another and of all who come to us in his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's faithfulness and his mercy may be with all who suffer and that through his name, their strength may be exalted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed loved ones may have reason to sing the goodness of the Lord and to exalt his faithfulness at the wedding banquet of, the, of heavenly joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Shall we add our personal intentions? Hail Mary.
For Lord of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, these are the few we have mentioned to you this morning. Many more lie hidden in our hearts. We humbly ask you, grant us these, not according to our merits, but according to the power of your forgiveness. We ask this through Christ our Lord.